How dare you? You're coming in the dungeon. Well, okay. I've been wanting to make this uh, high, mini Heine keg wood stove for about a year or two and just haven't had any time to get to it. So I've had some time and thought I would put one together that was geared once again for uh, more more of a backpacking version than um, than something that you'd use uh, in a cabin or um, in a TP that doesn't have a ground cloth. I'm just thinking a lot of a lot of guys go out for the weekend uh, and the win do some winter hiking and they're going to be using backpacking tents. So I was trying to gear it in that direction. So what I did was I had previously built one that was in the uh, the vertical position and found that you know it was a little harder to load um, probably you know a little less safe than a horizontal one which had a you know a lower center of gravity so to make a long story short um, had some guys at work collect some uh, mini kegs for me and decided to start with the um, I use a safety lid to kind of cut out the front the front of the mini keg here and immediately started to um, put some rivets in with some T-nuts and um, some threaded rod and again using the steel rivets of course um, decided to add these uh, small nuts to the base just for a little a little more um, heat dispersion as well as traction perhaps if it was on the ground or on snow where you could actually you know get some more venting under here you know you wouldn't be melting as much snow um, if you actually did use it in a tent you could use maybe like a, a coddle bottle coaster just cut out the bottom of the coddle bottles and make a little coaster to, to uh, have a little more heat dispersion um, my next step was to uh, cut the door panel um, out of the, the cap here so cut out the door panel um, bought a small uh, kind of like a piano hinge cut that to fit the door um, got myself a little uh, J bolt here with some nuts and washers to form a locking mechanism here added uh, a small piece of steel that I uh, used some tin snips to kind of cut the circular design put a little tab here with the handle with some Kevlar thread so that you could uh, adjust your um, airflow in the stove seem to it seems to be working well uh, rivet I riveted the um, the front portion of the keg back on again uh, I had an option to maybe press the front of the mini keg and see if I could flatten out the surface I just think that it's a, a good idea if you're actually gonna use you know the wood to uh, heat heat a tent or some other enclosure that it would be prudent to heat some water which of course is the fastest way to heat a body is to introduce hot fluids so just riveted on the top of a, uh, a soup can lid with some uh, some fixtures that I found in the um, hardware department at Lowe's um, where the uh, locks are and I cut a panel out of the uh, back of the uh, mini keg and kind of made an insert out of a Sapporo can. So I just cut out a portion of the Sapporo can and flared out the ends and you'll be able to see that on the inside. I kind of flared out the ends, put some rivets in and now I have a quick disconnect for the Sapporo can flu that's going to be made and it's a pretty pretty tight fit as you can see I'm trying to go with the best of both worlds and make this light but I also don't want to have issues with it in the winter when you know my dexterity is down and you may be cold you may be in the mountains um, so I added this portion of a hasp just to kind of use if I needed to move the stove in an emergency from the tent I could put a beaner on there kind of carry it off um, using this uh, piece here and I can even add a beaner on this side and this side and just carry it out of the out of the tent if necessary you can also use this to attach it 
to the back of your pack. Um, and all of these items, the legs and the chimney to be, which is going to consist mostly of uh, a couple of Sapporo cans, a couple of coddle bottles that are used um, after the Sapporo cans, after the heat dissipates. They'll be, you know, you don't need to use steel all the way up. You can use the aluminum. It's a lot lighter. And there's a transitional can here. Uh, that's a steel juice can and a V8 aluminum can that actually snugs into place um, with a small baffle. I've got a baffle on the inside made from, uh, this isn't hardware cloth, this is some aluminum screening that they you can use barbecuing and thought that I would be certain that a lot of ash wasn't coming out so there's a couple of screens inside and one here uh, of course with the rain cap on it there's uh, a spacer made from the a wick, the wicking material from a wood stove. This is going to be the area um, where there'll be a, a bypass for um, most likely the vestibule is where I'm going to be venting this from. So this area here will be passing through the um, tent material in the vestibule with some more aluminum screening um, around it. I haven't fine-tuned this area, but some more of this aluminum screening with perhaps some of the carbon felt uh, around it just to be certain that there's not too much heat in contact, uh, even indirectly with the tent fabric. So that's going to be my next uh, project is just um, cutting out the Sapporo can to make the elbow to finish up the chimney. I'm trying the springs around this uh, little assembly here to see if um, I'll be able to actually open and close this when it is fired up that there is enough heat dissipated so that will yet to be determined hmm that might work got the two Sapporo cans I um, had to cut a significant portion off of this one um, so that it would be thin enough to fit into this one and I had to take advantage of the taper. I thought I might be able to um, just use a can and, and get a, a seal that way, but it didn't happen. So as you can see inside, um, I had to cut away some of the bottom, shape it, and um, just kind of screw it in. And it just keeps going in. The bottom can flexes, and because each one is tapered, and they've got these little ridges in them that kind of strengthen them. It's, it looks like it's really going to work. So that's going to be the T in the um, coming off of the stove. And if you have it in a vestibule and you need to an extension, you, you can take the one off the top and uh, use it this way until you get out of the vestibule and then run the rest of the chimney up. Uh, I think it's going to work. You can actually carry this with the two pieces removed and um, put your coddle bottle portions inside for storage in the uh, in the um, mini keg. But the f if you take your time, you can get such a tight seal, and partially because of the flaring of both cans, you can get this uh, pretty darn tight. And I don't think there'll be much leakage to speak of. I think that the draft will, will take most of it out. I mean, it's very tight. Take a close look there. Seal is very tight. So, can't wait to burn this. Yeah, Jimmy Stewart would be really proud of me right now, you know. Just she would love this wood stove, gosh darn it. Um, coming up with uh, a couple of options using these fashioned around the cans with uh, once again the Kevlar, the um, yeah, carbon felt and this uh, aluminum uh, grating. So that'll be the next step.